everybody um this is not a new bow although it looks like um today i want to um to make a special video for my first custom bow and this bow is made by falkenholz um, this is a german bowyer um, translated the name means uh, falcon wood and uh, yeah this bow is a recurve takedown as you can see it's not an elf system it's just um, their system they have and has this nice shape like horns and um, yeah what to say uh, it was the 15th of in march in 2019 when we um, got up very early and have driven to Falkenholz to get this bow and uh, yeah it was a very remarkable day and i still think of this day with uh, yeah much fun it's been very exciting and uh, looking uh, watching the bow the very first time was just wow and um, you know this this wood always turns out a bit differently and um, yeah i was just amazed um, it's still um, a very beautiful bow and i have so many beautiful bows so i cannot say which one's the most beautiful they are all beautiful in their own way yeah what do we have here this wood is stabilized yeah it's not naturally grown but there's also colored and stabilized um we call that actual wood and um, we have here carbon layers on the limbs we have overlays matching to the riser and uh, we have tips also matching with the riser with carbon very small ones and um, this is the second set um, i started with this bow with uh, 22 pound limbs and these are 33 pound limbs um, i got the bow 15th of march with a 22 and approximately half a year later i got these limbs now i'll show you um, this way the weight the draw weight so here we have the 28 inches marker um, currently we have approximately 22 uh, degree percent 22 percent humidity all right zero I don't know if you can see it. 34.56. That's a bit more and exactly what I expect that the, the humidity is dry, the bows get a bit stronger. And um, to my anchor point would be here. We have 27 and a half pound. So, yeah, this bow is made for Mediterranean draw. Left hand, as you can see. Um, you may wonder why left hand, because usually I show right hand draw videos. When I started in 2018, I was still suffering uh, from a frozen shoulder, this side and I couldn't put pressure on this shoulder, but I could draw. So I said, okay, I start archery, then I start with a left hand draw, so what? And that's why I have a left hand draw bow. Yeah. This is how it looks. And usually I keep this bow unstrung. You can keep it strong. My husband does it. It's a long time test. He doesn't shoot regularly. Once a year. If this is regularly, then it's regularly. And he keeps the bow strong because it looks so beautiful on the wall. 
Okay. Um, we have ray skin here, the ray skin. And the arrow pass, it's a center shooter, so hmm. <laughs> I can uh, measure it here, but yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to compare. Yeah, so we have two centimeters or 20 millimeters with including the ray skin. Weight of the bow is remarkable. One kilo, 130 gram. So it's really a heavy bow. Um, this is due to the action wood we have. And um, the riser is relatively large. There are larger ones, so it's not the, the maximum. But if I measure the size from here to there, this is more or less straight. This is approximately 20 inches from here to there. Yeah. Um, measuring the bow in a typical way uh, on the belly is a bit difficult here due to the shape. That would be not the correct way how to measure. So I measure only the strong version. And strong. It's not. Uh, maybe I do it like this. It's 58. Yeah, we can, we can say 58 and a bit. Not even a half. 58. So it's a, a long bow compared in the Asiatic uh, bow shapes. Really long. Um, I can strung a tongue bow so that you have comparison I'll do this in a bit just want to show you um, I have a lot of accessories for this bow so it's like a Barbie doll <laughs> um, I have here a bow quiver this has been made excellently by Mark Lang and uh, yeah, this is this way this is just attached here and then this is a rubber stripe then fixed here so that it doesn't fall off and this is for the lower section and then you're good to go it's quickly attached yeah. and then the arrows can just fit in here like this but this gives extra weight and um, this needs to be calculated So, uh, what else? Um, the first quiver, um, leather quiver, I've uh, been custom made by um, Laszlo from v VLBB. Very nice. So, I've uh, sent him pictures um, or photos from my bow and he tried to get a matching color. Well, well, quite good, yeah, indeed. And he has noted it somewhere because later he has done me this. This is a pocket quiver, um, a matching food rest, very nicely. And of course, my tab. I have a bearboard tab, split finger tab, various designs and colors. You just take this rubber band off, put the bow in here, uh, just where it should be, and then just attach it, and then the bow is fixed, and you have the hands free for walking. For example, if you're on a parkour, you don't want to have uh, the bow always in the hand, you can just attach it and then you need a bit space around you but uh, this is fine in our times anyway yeah 
no problem. Okay, and um, of course I have a matching um, bow stand from uh, Shibuya. I like this very much because you can just easily fold it. Show you. just easy that's really cool bow stand back and for this bow stand I have made myself a standing quiver because sometimes you just if you are local yeah and don't walk around then you can work with a standing quiver as well this one is here attached to this loop and fixed here so. and then can carry it like this around okay bow back on the whole step right and so to avoid any scratches i have fur here um, attached to the bow stand uh, what else? Um, I have um, this bracer from VLBB and uh, yeah, this is over the top. Yeah, definitely. But um, this rubber band was always um, uh, cutting here into my arm and so, so this is a bit less than, yeah, it's a bit um, softer, as you can see. No traces. Yeah, and what else you can see is that I didn't hold the bow good because um, the string slided here this way. And um, this doesn't happen anymore because of uh, I learned thumb release, I hold the bow differently, I shoot differently, and this helps also with the Mediterranean draw. All right. Now I get um, the tongue uh, bow for reference so that you have an impression. Okay, here we have the tongue, Dun Huang. So not the tongue Chang An, that would be even longer, but it will help to get you an impression. So. Now you can compare. Yeah. So it's even a bit longer, maybe um, approximately the same length as a uh, uh, Chang'an. And brace height, I didn't know that before. Brace height, if that could be near the top. Here yeah, you can see quite different. So not comparable at all. Okay, let's try it. Race height. Yeah, measuring the race height here. Hmm. Copy from here. Exchanged the lens, but uh, comparing the two styles, you see the differences in design. Okay, right. What else? 
we have the weight, the length, the race height, um, this we have um, the strings, arrows. Any arrows are fine. I could shoot any. Yeah, so the boyer didn't limit it. And the only thing it needs to be an arrow. And uh, this for today, I shoot um, the Elso Pro 800 from Niora, and they have a weight of approximately 290 grams. Let's shoot! Okay, now shooting. Um, I shoot a bit differently to uh, what I've learned in 2018 and 19. So I started archery in 2018, October, with a um, borrowed bow, so I've, uh, was it land? So I've paid for it, yeah, for half a year. And um, I decided to get a nice custom bow, and this is this one. And um, yeah, I learned. Stand straight, hold bow straight, pull. The elbow should be in line with the arrow, that is universal. And then just a small movement backwards. And I think I always gave it a little twist. Yeah, so I did more or less this movement. Yeah. And then you twist the string a bit. And this can um, let the arrow fly a bit differently than what you expect. And um, the continuous draw would be universal here too, so it's usually going back. Now you have the anchor point, then you release and you go back. Right. Um, I didn't do this really properly, yeah, so I was learning and trying to get it and I always kept the elbow high. I see um, this posture with fellow archers as well. So in our um, archery club, there are a few who keep the elbow high up. And I try this to get this elbow down and it's nearly impossible for me to do. So I know how it should look like, but I can't. Uh, I'll show you in a bit. And um, please apologize. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just not working. Yeah, I can do it with some draw, no problem but I can't do it Mediterranean style. Then second, I started with bare bow taps. And with bare bow, you need to estimate the distance and then find out how much you need to go downwards and then pull and... So this may um, result in a very low um, here that means that the lower limb is really stressed uh, because it needs to be and much more than the upper limb and I don't like that so um, I use a split finger tap but then I need to point differently if you use a barrel tap and you just go down the string you can always point into the center you always need to only need to know where to grab I always grab at the same position, but then I need to vary with pointing. And this is a bit difficult to find out. And especially if you're in the garden, you don't want to test much. So I'm only on a short distance, so 10 meters. Um, don't want to risk more for the time being until I am more confident where to aim. Yeah, so only short distances today. As you know from here. <laughs> okay, 
now. Always secure the arrow with my index finger unless I'm ready to shoot because so I cannot lose it, cannot drop. Yeah, right. Open stand and uh, I do not hold the bow straight. I can't it. I can't my body. And the release you might find very similar to those of the Gaoyin style. It's somehow in my vertebra somehow, I don't know. So it's, I cannot release that anymore. So it's, you see it in a bit. So this is not um, a true Mediterranean style anymore. Don't take me as a reference. Hit. The only thing I don't do is cut up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that's okay with a recurve take down bow. And I don't close any of the eyes. So I keep both eyes open. This is another difference to what I've learned in 2018. Yeah, right. So two hits and one off. I'll show you. Ah, not the best, but the last one is the one uh, close to the uh, house court, to the head. to the head. Seagull is still smiling at me. Ah. Still alive. Yeah! <laughs> so the bow sounds very nice. So it's it's a very dark sound. As you can see here, my hand fits quite nicely. And you should hold the bow very lightly. You should don't grab it like this. It's just easy. Yeah, and the bow doesn't fall off the hand. You see? So you can relax. If you release, the bow will be still in the hand. Okay. And what's nice? Blue ray skin. Okay, right. Next round. Well, that was stri straight where it should go. <laughs> Although I think it must have looked a bit. Ooh. Um, please don't take me as a reference for um, recurve takedown shooting correctly, Mediterranean style. Mm. Uh, not the good reference here. Yep. Should that get a triple hit? Hmm. Yes! <laughs> first really straight in the bull's eye if you want and the others as well too so oh that's really okay as promised close to the belly Close to the belly, close to the other arrow. Maybe it would be nice to hit the target. Yeah. <laughs> so. Close. 
close to the head. Yep. Hit. Yep, it's another hit. <laughs> So the one boy was right, uh, you can shoot a shitty style, it's always the same, it's, it works at least. Maybe you get some comments that uh, that doesn't look good and you need to do this and you need to do that. If you can't, but if you hit. Ah, the bird is not repositioned. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hit. That was more or less an impossible shot. <laughs> the seagull stands uh, sideways and I hit the target in the front of the belly. That's special, I'll show you afterwards. Yeah, this was the shoulder. A bit of a tail or so. I should. So, the first one is this one here. It was really close to the target, and the bird was standing that way. That. Then um, the shoulder hit, and then. Yeah. Tail hit somehow. Or maybe just below. So, resume. Um, the question is not what do I think of my bow. The question is why did I try others if I have such a fine bow as a first bow? Um, yeah, it's curiosity. You know? So I wanted to test different styles, different bows. And there are so many beautiful bows out there. And I wanted just to experience more. Coming um, to this bow, um, it's a fine crafted bow, very nicely, stable, it's um, stable regarding strength over the years, doesn't change, um, there is of course no delamination, so it's high quality bow, um, the feeling is great, so um, I can shoot hours and I wouldn't have any bruises or something. So this is really cool. Um, this uh, riser here um, is one of the standard forms Falkenholz has. It's a Peregrine 2. And um, yeah, this just fits nicely. And it's a, a centered riser, of course. Um, it's not an ELF riser. It's uh, here the special format of Falkenholz and this is the second edition I have of um, risers, not because the others were, were broken, um, the others were just 22 pounds for the beginner and these are 30, 33. So this is the second um, pair of uh, limbs I have for this bow. And um, yeah, this is one of the advantages you have of the recurve takedown. Um, the string is then special for uh, this bow um, because it's a bit stronger than the other and um, yeah, it's, it's amazing, beautiful. So I cannot, I don't know if you can see this color shadings, this blue and gray. So pff, it's a really beautiful bow and it shoots very nicely. As you can hear, very nice from the sound, sound wise too. And um, this is also because of this furry helpers here, um, but it has never been a loud bow. So where should it come from? Uh, so there is no, um, 
there is no wiggling or whatsoever so this bow is stiff um, like a railway yeah of course straight as you can see here I don't know if it's the right angle yeah. and this beauty has its third birthday 15th of April yeah a very remarkable day in that year and I, I still shoot this bow with pleasure so, and then I decided to get into thumb draw and then you need to practice properly yeah Armin was my online teacher and I've um, sent him every week a video or a few videos of various positions and then I got feedback and learned and learned so I kept on learning thumb draw more or less properly and um, so I needed to pause Mediterranean style and uh, yeah if you mix what you learned in thumb draw techniques with Mediterranean style uh, it looks like mine yeah so okay I take it as it is and as long as I hit it's good because it's about having fun and this bow is fun yeah it's as we should say a fun shooter it's not a lightweight by far not so this is really heavy bow uh, but it's just easy to handle despite the weight yeah so you can hold it shoot and um, do this one day long or more days doesn't matter so it's not only a beauty but also a very good shooter and reliable and you can shoot any arrows on it it just needs to be an arrow yeah so there is no minimum draw weight um, I could shoot very lightweight at once but I don't want to um, usually I have normal arrows in mine oh, I don't know what the weight of these ones 290 so I can't read anymore so this is even uh, yeah, it doesn't matter yeah, so weight of the arrow is no topic for this bow. You can shoot whatever you like. And um, what else to say? Um, my husband has a five miles bow as well, and he kept it strong for a year now without shooting. Doesn't make any difference. So I don't do it. Yeah. So um, I will. Uh, unstrung and string the bow again if I put him back into his place but um, I could keep him strung for until next time yeah. but uh, I don't do it with my bows okay yeah that's it for today thank you very much Five Moholz for building this very nice beauty for me and uh, thanks everybody for watching wish you a good time and um, Fingers crossed for friends in Ukraine. Thank you. Bye bye.